Around the democratic world, there's a power struggle taking place that might end up being the most damaging and long-lasting consequence of this era of populism. Elected leaders from Donald Trump to Turkey's Erdogan to India's Modi have been steadily attacking the independence of their nation's central banks. As The Economist points out, politicians in the 1970s would routinely use central banks to goose the economy to help them win elections. This helped create a wave of inflation that paralyzed economies and caused untold misery. As a result, over the last three decades, countries have given central banks much greater independence. The United States was one of the leaders in this regard, with Paul Volcker asserting the Federal Reserve's independence and breaking the back of the stagflation that had crippled the American economy in the 1970s. Today, it is Trump who is leading the charge in the opposite direction. He is attacking the Fed and asking it not only to cut rates, but to actually engage in emergency measures to boost the economy at a time of robust growth and low unemployment. To ensure that the Fed complies with his wishes, Trump plans to nominate two candidates to its board whose main qualification appears to be a slavish devotion to the president. But Trump is not alone. Last year, Erdogan issued a decree allowing him to directly appoint the country's central bank leadership. In March, Turkey's central bank spent $2 billion trying to prop up the lira in advance of local elections. In India, Prime Minister Modi pushed out two central bank governors so he could find a more pliable one. He has succeeded. The bank cut rates apparently to help him in the national elections that are now underway. In addition, he essentially raided the central bank's coffers for $4 billion to buy the votes of poor farmers. In South Africa, the governing party is moving to change the structure of its central bank, long private and fiercely autonomous. In the Philippines, the president appointed a close political ally to head the bank. The Italian populist governing coalition has been attacking the central bank's leadership in Italy and questioning whether the bank really should be the steward of the $100 billion of gold reserves that Italy has. To get a sense of how much the intellectual mood has changed, consider this. Alan Blinder, a Princeton economics professor who had served as vice chair of the Federal Reserve, wrote an essay in 1997 arguing that the Fed was so obviously successful at policymaking that government should adopt that model in all kinds of other areas like tax policy. This would shield policy from the overt political influence of elected officials. Today, Trump wants the opposite. He would like to infuse the short-term passions of partisan politics into the Federal Reserve. Trump senses that the country's mood has changed, and he's right. The financial crisis, the bank bailouts have all eroded the Fed's credibility. It's not just in America. Across the world, central banks are seen as having failed to rescue Main Street while being too generous to Wall Street. Some of this criticism is justified, though not really in the United States, where the actions of the Fed and the Bush and Obama administrations worked much better than anywhere else. But even where the critique has merit, the solution should not be to destroy the entire institutional structure of central bank independence. The assault on central banks will not have an immediate effect, but over time, their credibility will be eroded, their effectiveness will wane, and then one day, when the next crisis hits, we will all wish we had institutions that could weather the storm. But by then, it will be too late.